In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Follow me. A commandment of two words that changed the life, the life of millions. Just two words. Follow me. And this is the path of all our life. One time I was heading to a monastery that I never went to before and it's a very uh, very tough and also you need to pass through a ghetto area that is very very risky very risky really to get through it and being a priest and I am driving and I have no clue exactly of that I never went to that monastery in this uh, in this uh, way before I never visited that monastery but I, anyway it's a long story so I kept calling people okay have you been there have you been there have you been there then I found one okay tell me exactly uh, how to go there and he told me ah, ah you can just go and take no, no 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 I need to meet with you and tell me exactly how I will go and he started um, telling me about the path and while he was telling me he told me you know what you will go through a very weird area and this area is full of full of people who are um, uh, extreme uh, Muslims and if you step out of the car I am not responsible for anything else you just need to stay in the car stay on the road don't mess around don't get distracted it is on this path so I told them, okay, I, know, I don't know what he is talking about, but he is telling me that in the past you will go through a, an area anyway. I was, um, uh, it was Friday, and all the good things in Egypt after, it happens after Friday prayers. All the attacks of the church, all the, the, the killing of the Christians is, is after just their prayers. And this tells you... Uh, a profound message so prayer is leading to this path anyway I started up early and I was planning to go all the way to the monastery and also I said you know what maybe I will, I will fast as I will be able to take communion there and attend the liturgy and um, I followed the exact path that he is telling me and there was a fork on the road uh, a path that you will take a bridge and another path to take another bridge and they didn't know he didn't tell me about any bridges <laughs> then I took the left side and one I, I found myself in um, it's like uh, the, the market of the city where they are blocking the whole market because it was Friday and they are praying Friday prayers and I am in the car it's no one way, there is no way back. And I'm in the car and I'm in front of tens of, of, uh, of people who are praying and I'm in the car, a priest heading face to face with them in my car and said, you know what, this is, this is not a good place. I said, you know what, okay. Then I just made the sign of the cross secretly. I closed the windows. I made the return very very slowly I returned I didn't have any eye contact with anyone I will tell you to, to that extent that it was tough if you open the window you can't grab any of the, of the, the stuff that was, they were selling but, but they were, the, the, the market is closed and it is very, very tight so I made a U-turn very very slowly uh, Manel was, me, was with me in that time we kept praying then I said, definitely, he told me to go through this area, but definitely now it is not a go through, because they are praying and I cannot move, and now I am stuck. Made a U-turn, took all the way uh, uh, backwards, then uh, I called the people and I told them, okay, what's going on? They told me, oops, you are in that area, thank God that you went out now I will tell you another path to take make a U-turn and go all the way and um, I think maybe halfway we, we were 
we were lost, but not, a, not a, uh, in the middle of nowhere. We were lost, and we found someone, Christian. He told me, Abuna, don't worry, I'm heading there. And I said, yes. Then I will follow you wherever you go. I will not deviate. I will not uh, look around. I will not get distracted. I will follow you. And the amazing thing in this gospel is someone who is... Com- think of, of this gospel of someone in Wall Street. Have you seen any of the... I haven't been to Wall Street, inside of Wall Street, but I've seen a couple of uh, scenes of movies of people w- working in Wall Street where are shouting and screaming and... And when the time is on, everybody is screaming and phone calls and selling and buying. and It's a huge amount of distraction with everything around you is money. Money, 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 everything, everywhere. And this was the environment of and after these things he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi and sitting at a tax office and he said to him follow me it is just exactly as if God is going to Wall Street knocking on one of the doors the guy opened the door I was hello follow me he left he left everything all his phone calls all his salaries all his life all his connections and he went and he followed him this is exactly the calling of Matthew Sam Matthew a tax, in order to be a tax collector, you need really to be advanced in connection and advanced in oppression of the people. Because think of this, if the Roman Empire is asking uh, Mikey to uh, collect from uh, my family $100,000 a year as a tax, okay, $10,000 as a tax. But you need to come to me if you ask me for $10,000, do you think that I will give you 10000 no, I will tell you, I have five, I have four, I have three. So you will ask me, okay, give me 20. So as when I compromise with you, at least you will secure the 10. But after this, okay, how you are going to make money for your living? So you need to ask maybe for 25. So when you ask for 25, maybe you take five and you bargain with the people, you take 10, give it to the Roman Empire. And at least now you are making it on the expense of the people because who cares about the people in this setting so the tax collector and he was a chief tax collector so he was not only collecting from people he was collecting money from the tax collector who are collecting taxes from the people who are a big boss here we are speaking about people who are wired in the love of money and wired in oppressing people and betraying and Pushing, it's a cutthroat situation. And the unbelievable message from the Lord, follow me. And the unbelievable response of Matthew, he left everything and he followed him. And every time we go to the church and every time we encounter in the, the, the scripture in our relationship with God, God is telling you and me, follow me. Is it that hard? It sounds in the beginning that it is not easy. But in order to follow God, sometimes you don't know the destination. I'm following you where? Just follow me. As the, the, second, the, the second man whom I met in the middle of the trip, he told me, don't worry about it, just follow me. Okay, this is, great. This is the easiest path. I will follow you exactly. But... but by the, by the way, now Google, uh, Google uh, Maps is working perfectly in Egypt. Unbelievably perfect. So if, by that time, by the idea, there was no Google Maps. So, in order to follow God, uh, it sounds very simple. And it took over the life of Matthew and the life of millions of people who are following Christ but in order to follow God, first of all, you, know, you need to know Him. You cannot just follow someone. This guy who greeted me and told me, Abun, at least he identified with me as a Christian, and uh, he is a Christian, and he is a leader, and, he is, and I am the, uh, a leader, and he is going to the place that I am heading to. So now we know each other, though I don't know anything about him as, as a person, but we know each other. And you cannot follow someone that you don't know, but we do this. 
you read something on the social media and you, yeah, you like it and you pro- pro- promote it and you speak about it as if it is part of your family and you have nothing to, to know or nothing to do with what this person is doing in life. Sometimes we follow celebrity, celebrities like this as well because just we... Uh, he had this haircut so everybody you find all the teenagers are having this haircut because this famous uh, guy had this ha- haircut or uh, the, she had made her, uh, her hair uh, dyed her hair blue so all the teenagers are dyeing their, head, their hair is blue because she has done this and, so, and it is just we are following blindly and we don't know the person and after a while you see uh, news about how, how those people are living a very an opposite life that what God has uh, asked us to do but let us be back on the path God is asking me and is asking each one of us to follow him so how, how to do this number one know him because if you don't know him how you are going to follow knowing God is a key what he likes, what he don't like, what is really he is big about, what he, um, it's not a big deal. Faith is, is a very big deal with, with the Lord. That's why when Peter was told God, if you are the Lord, ask me that I will walk on water and then come to you. And Peter walked on the water and after walking on the water, he got distracted. He didn't keep his eye on the Lord and he started drowning. And he asked the Lord, help me. And the Lord told, stretched out his hand and he get hold of Peter and he told him, Ya qalil al-iman, limaza shakat? Oh, you of little faith, why you have doubted? Why you have doubt in your heart? And here, when we know God, when we know his vision and what he is, has established, then you know that you are on the right path or the wrong path. Many people get... I always, I always had this question. Okay, you know what? I, I am following God. I am living a very nice life. And, and I'm going to church. I'm confessing. But I just smoked one cigarette. And while I am smoking this cigarette, I die. Where I'm going to head? I'm going to head to... Uh, where I'm going to end up being? In, in heaven or in hell? Is, the, is, is God really waiting on you to, uh, to smoke that cigarette and take your life to end your life in a misery? Is the whole point is which path you are on? Which path you are on? Abuna Lua Sidaros, we, we were uh, sitting with him in the clergy retreat. And every time Abuna Lua is sitting, all the, many of the younger Abunas are gathering around him, asking him questions. This very normal setting. So, Abuna said this. Abuna said, don't get distracted with a lot of things. Think of the spiritual path as the 91 freeway. Are you on, the, on track? Are you on the freeway or not? This is the hundred, the multi-million dollars. Are we following him or not? You are on the fast track, okay, you are crawling on the freeway, okay, you are on a bike, fine, you are taking a ride, fine, you are taking Uber, Lyft, call it, okay. Are you on the path or you deviated from the path? And the guy who died after smoking the cigarette, the whole point is, are you on the path of God? Okay, if you are on the real path of God, even if you smoke a cigarette and you know that this is a sin, you will return back and confess and repent and... Continue pursuing your God in your life. But the whole point is, if you are on the, the four or five thinking that you are on the 91, you are on a completely different path. And you are, whatever effort you are going to do on the four or five is not heading anywhere. Because you are heading to a wrong destination. So when Christ is saying, I am, and I am the, the, the way, the truth and the life. He means that he is the way. So number one in order to follow God is knowing him. And in orthodoxy, the system is very clear and very established. 
Even if you don't know the path, even if you are new to anything, if you are in, if you are in India and you have no clue about anything in India. So one of the, the things that you can secure yourself in if you go to the map and see, okay, I am in uh, Calcutta and I need to head to New Delhi. So, okay, there is, from the map, there is this path. If there is a train that goes from this situation, this location to that location, then I am secured. I don't need anything. I will go and take the train and it will move me from this place to this place. And God has established the train system which is the church to take us from his words, from the scripture, apply it in our life and tell, tell us, you know what, you don't, get to, uh, you don't need to get confused from whatever is happening outside. Just stay in the premises of this train, stay in the church and you will be secured. So in order, number one, in order to follow God, number one is knowing him. Number two is Trust and obey his commands. Trust and obey his commands. Because if that guy that I met in the middle of the trip, he told me, follow me, but I told him, I know what, but, um, you know what, uh, no, no, I, uh, I know better. I don't need your help. I will, I will figure it out. I, I have my own ways. I, if I got stuck, I will manage. So he was saying, okay, you are on your own. I, will, I don't need to keep an eye on you because I, I have to go. So, in order to follow God, not only knowing Him, but trusting that wherever He is taking you, if you are obedient and keeping your eye on Him, this will lead to eternal life. But sometimes, whenever He is taking us, it is very tight, very crushing, going through a narrow gate, and it says, you know what, does it? this doesn't make sense. But he gave us the warning as the first guy told me. You know what? You are going to go into a, through a ghetto area. Don't do anything. Stay in the car. Stay focused. Don't change any of, um, of the plans that we agreed on. And the Lord himself st- told us this exactly, exactly in, Matthew, in the gospel of the Sermon on the Mount in the gospel of Matthew. There is a wide gate and wide path that many, many are entering through this gate, but this gate is leading to condemnation or is leading to hell. And there is a narrow gate, and the path is not easy, it's a difficult path, and few who find it, and it leads to eternal life. So before following Him, or after knowing God, we need to trust His commandments, we need to trust what He is telling us, and literally obey it with no exception. Because if I am obedient in everything, but when, when it comes to, tell, to, uh, to something small, and I say, you know what, I, I, I will do this, it's no big deal, uh, I will do whatever uh, I see is fit. And here, when I'm putting myself away from the guidance of God. So number one, know Him. Number two is trust and obey the Lord, because if we don't trust Him, and we don't obey his commandments, unfortunately, it will be very tough and we will be, we will be lost. The third point is, keep your eye on him. Because if you cannot keep your eye on him, you will lose focus, and if you lost focus, if this, this guy in the, mid, in the second half of the trip, if I lost eye, if I lost keeping an eye on him, then I lost the path. I don't know where I'm going. If he's speeding, I'm speeding. If he's slowing, I'm slowing. If he's stopping, I'm stopping. Now, كما ينبغي now, كما سلك ذاك ينبغي أن نسلك نحن أيضا. As he has walked, we need also to walk in his path. And the tough thing is, you know that in the path of God there will be a cross, because he went through it. And here, when everyone around him. لا 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 احنا جينا بقى غلط نشيل صليب carry a cross no 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 this is tough and I cannot go through this path I cannot. and here were people astray but he said in advance من لا يحمل صليبه كل يوم وينكر نفسه ويتبعني لا يستطيع أن يكون نيت الميزن if you are not carrying your cross every day and following me And uh, denying yourself and following me every day, you cannot be my disciple. 
So one of the things that we try to deviate when we know that there is a cross in the path. And you say, no, now we are freaking out, we don't, know, we don't want to go through this. And we think that the cross, no, no, this is too heavy, I cannot go through this, I cannot go through this, I cannot live a righteous life, everybody around me is dating, everybody around me is cheating, everybody around me is, is stealing, everybody around me is taking things that are not theirs, everybody around me is not obeying their parents, everybody around me is messing around. Uh, but I know that he said, in order to follow me, you need to know that you are carrying a cross. It is carrying a cross when you are living a righteous life. It is carrying a cross when you say no to sin. It is carrying a cross when you say no to unethical practice. It is carrying a cross right now. There was a guy who had a business, and in that business, he was doing a lot of uh, money. Think of this, that this is not the true numbers, but just think of this number as an example. He was making like 400 grand in his business every year. But he was doing a lot of unethical practices. A lot. And he came to the Lord and he returned back to God and entered the church and started being active in the church. And he knew that what he's doing is, is wrong. And God is telling him, follow me, okay, but if I follow you, then all these unethical practices I shouldn't be doing. Then hear what I am going to do. And he took... The, the, he was courageous enough and he said, you know what, I'm not going to do those unethical practices anymore. His income dropped from 400 to 100,000. And he lost 75% of his business. And he got really, after one year, he got really, really um, shaken from inside and now how I'm going to live, how I'm going to pay my bills, how I'm going to survive and my family and all of this. But he said, let me be faithful in what I have promised God. If I am following him, then I am following him faithfully and I'm keeping my eye on him. And if I'm keeping my eye on him, I cannot mess around and do this type of business. Two years after this, he started establishing a very strong practice because when you are doing business ethically, you have a very strong foundation because no one can sue you, no one can um, uh, push you to do something wrong. And after two years, he reached the landmark of 400,000 again. After he, so he, he stayed for three years, struggling really, really financially, but he said, if I'm following God, I will choose the path of carrying the cross. And this is carrying the cross when you are do, do not lying in a, a situation that is uh, everybody or a situation that is away from God. So number one is know God. Number two is trust and obey because if we don't trust and we don't obey we will, we will get lost. Number three is keep your eye on Him. Not the last thing then this is number four is do not get distracted by anything. Because we get, one of, the, one of the writers said, we are distracted from distraction by distraction. So it, we are distracted. You go and you say, no, I, I, will, I will have a cup of water. Your phone is ringing. Somebody is texting. Somebody liked your, uh, your message on Instagram. So you keep rotating. Uh, and after 30 minutes, <laughs> I forgot that I wanted to get this uh, cup of water. And we are all over the place. You know that, uh, don't quote me on the exact number, but I think 65% of teenagers, the first thing they open their eyes on is, is, is their cell phone. And the first thing that they leave before they sleep is their cell phone. Tell me where God will be put in. If you, if you catch your cell phone from the beginning of the day, it is gone. If I, opened, if I opened the email or I followed up on the things that needed to be done from the beginning of the day, the day is gone. Literally, the day is gone. And a very nice exercise when you wake up, 
the best scenario is not to have the, the, the phone in your, in your bedroom, but this is, uh, I know. Uh, you will tell me, Tabul alarm, or, or, you can get an alarm from Walmart with five dollars, no big deal. But uh, we, we need to, to keep the phone beside, because maybe, may, maybe anything will happen in any time that I, I need to, anything in, in my phone. And unfortunately, we are becoming attached to our phones more than we are attached to God. We are counting on our phones more than we are... Who of us can go outside of his... If you are going to a trip and you forget your phone, you return back. Even if you are going to get delayed, if you are going to cancel the flight and rebook the flight. Who of us will return back to get the Bible? including myself. So, don't get distracted by anything. A very, I think this is one of the most precious things that if you do, will change your life. The first, the first 15 minutes, from 10 to 15 minutes, in the beginning of the day, don't even touch your phone. Don't keep it upside down. Because what happened in the past 8, year, eight hours when you are sleeping is not going to change in 10 minutes, right? Is it going to change? So adding 10 more minutes to the 8 hours is no big deal. Leave it. Leave the phone. We'll check on him and we'll, we'll feed him and we'll worship him after a while. Then, do whatever you need to do in the beginning of your day and start the day in front of God praying psalms and reading the scripture. And here, when the whole day is changing, the problem is, once you are connected you cannot disconnect all the day till something is forcing you to disconnect. But if I'm not connected, I'm, I'm leaving the phone away and I start reading my Bibles, uh, praying the, the, my Psalms with the Akbaya, and I start a fruitful day, then you have a completely different, different aspect. The, the problem is from distraction, we are distracted so we don't even know if we are on the path or not on the path, or we are on track or not on track, if God is, if we are looking to him or not, we have no clue. But the more we, we are focused, the more we keep an eye on him, the more things is different. May God give me and give each one of us, that we will always, every day, remember the, the calling of Matthew, and whatever you are doing, you can integrate God in your daily life. You can integrate God in every single aspect of your life. It is not a must to be a clergy or a deacon or a servant in the church to have God in every... If you are seeing clients before seeing the clients, tell God, give me grace in their eyes. Put your hand before my hand. I told you this story many times. Uh, the most famous cardiothoracic surgeon in the whole world, Magdi Aoub, He's retired now. He was operating on a lady from Egypt, and she told me this story. For her condition, this is the most famous surgeon in the whole world. He's a Coptic. And he has done this uh, surgery thousands of times. But for her health, she cannot take full anesthesia, so they uh, give her anesthesia just in her uh, upper part of her body, but she is awake and she is uh, listening. But she cannot see anything because they are putting, like, uh, when they have an open heart surgery, you will, you will be knocked down if you see yourself open. So she listened to Magdi Aoub saying, Ya Rabb, hot eedak abli eedi. O God, put your hand before my hand. So, I don't think that any of us is much better than this uh, surgeon in whatever they are doing, even myself in prayer. <laughs> But he is counting on God in every single thing, even if you have done it hundred times. But you need, and here when you, when you keep your eyes on God and you have God with you all uh, throughout all the day, to whom is the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>